Hi booktube, Lynette here again and for this video I'm going to talk to you about the second half of April, the books that I managed to finish. I'm glad I did decide to break this video to separate videos because otherwise this would have been one very long um, video. So far I have finished 14 books, it's the 30th of April, I'm likely to finish another book today so I am going to include this one that one right at the end of the video um so in total that'll be 15 books that I finished in April sorry if I talk really quickly through this um but I'm actually trying to go off my goodreads list and I uh don't have a lot of battery on it um so I will try and get through this as quickly as possible before the battery dies so in my previous video, wrap up video, I talked to you about the first seven books that I finished in April. So book number eight that I finished is The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. This is about a young warlock called Tsar and a young warrior princess called Wish. And it's about the discovery of magic um, and who has magic and why people don't have magic and why people do have magic. And it's just a really good fun. The book was narrated by David Tennant and he has a real talent for narrating audiobooks. I would quite gladly listen to something that he's narrated before. I also really enjoyed the story overall. Zar is a warlock who doesn't have any magic and he wants to try and find a witch so he can steal her magic and beat his brothers, uh, basically, um, with the amount of magic he has. Zar is a warrior princess who um, is trying to figure out why her mother locks up all the magical artifacts and it's about the adventure that the two of them go on when they meet. Uh, the warlocks and the warriors don't really get on so there is quite a lot of animosity between the pair of them um, in between. Uh, so there is um, lots of fun and things to go on and it's it's absolutely great for the age range that is um, written for I've highly recommended it to my sister who has an eight-year-old and I've actually on the wait list for the second audiobook from my library uh, because I can get that even though the libraries are closed at the moment with the lockdown in the UK. The ninth book that I finished in April was Nation by Terry Pratchett and this was one of the books that I finished for the Owls Readathon. And it's a book that I'm really, really glad that I chose uh, because it's just reignited, again, my love for uh, Terry Pratchett's writing. And I'm anticipating, although I haven't set anything for May, I think at some point this year I will be going back to the Discworld series to continue it uh, because I just fell in love with Terry Pratchett's writing all over again. Nation is about a boy, Mao, who is on his way back to his home island after spending time so in solitary on a small island to become a man um, only while he's traveling between the two islands a giant wave comes and destroys the home island um, or destroys the settlement and sweeps away all his family and friends and everyone he's ever known it also uh, wrecks a ship onto the island and on this ship the only survivor is a young girl called Daphne who is from England and this book is set, I think, late 1700s, early 1800s England. Um, so some of the dress is quite funny. Um, but it's about two young people who are finding themselves, learning about hope, learning about love, learning about family, uh, because they've both lost everything. And they have to make their own family now. Um, so it's really heartwarming to read. And I did really, really enjoy it. Uh, I It was just perfect uh, for what we're going through at the moment. It was just one of those perfect reads that you, you could get lost into. And I really enjoyed it. And in some ways I wish there'd been a sequel, but um, I don't think there was with the way he could have left it off, uh, the way he'd left this book off. I don't think he could have written a sequel, but then knowing Terry Pratchett, if he'd wanted to, he probably could have. At some point, this is probably going to lead me back to the Discworld series and I shall pick up the reread of that that I started in 2019. So book 10 of April was Rapture in Death by J.D. Robb and this was the April book that I had for the In Death Read Along. Again, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm really coming to love Eve and Rourke and Peabody and 
uh, all her friends and extended family that comes from being involved with Rourke and the police force as well. Uh, I really feel like Eve is coming out of her shell. She's really starting to come out of her shell and accept um, that actually she has a found family now. Uh, she has quite a traumatic history, uh, which means she's always been quite closed off to people. Um, so it's actually really lovely to see her coming into her own and flourishing through the love of Rourke. Anyway, at the start of this book, Eve and Rourke are on their honeymoon. They got married at the end of uh, the previous book. And uh, they've been having a lovely time. But towards the end of the honeymoon, unfortunately, uh, someone is found hanging. And being a cop on the scene, uh, Eve starts the process uh, that needs to be put into place because the, the place where they're honeymooning is actually a, um, a world that's in development, um, a holiday resort that's in development. So until someone else can get there to take over, Eve, Eve deals with it um, before finishing her honeymoon. When they return to New York, there is another suicide and it's a high profile suicide this time and Eve um, has the pathologist report which shows a strange mark on the brain of the victim and when someone else commits suicide Eve again finds that this mark is included and it takes it from there she's then convinced that actually these aren't suicides but they're murders again I pegged who the murderer was quite not early on but I was at least halfway through the book but this time I wasn't quite taken out of the story by it like I was in the first couple of books when this happened and I actually really enjoyed um really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed finding out and, and making it all link up because I the first two books where this happened I actually had an easy time linking up the murderer and how it was done and why it was done but with this one, I really couldn't get the motives behind it. So I enjoyed that part of it. Although there's different bits that I'm finding out. Uh, there's different parts of the mystery that she's managing to keep under wraps. Like I say, these books were written in the mid to late 90s. Uh, so J.D. Robb has really developed her style uh, since then. So I can see with each book, it's getting better and better. I've had issues with the writing style because she's very quick to switch between points of view with no warning and so sometimes that's a bit um it, it jar it's a bit jarring um but that's getting better with every book so i'm really enjoying that now it's either getting better or i'm getting used to it uh but yes really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to picking up the fifth book in the series in may so book 11 of april is another of my absolute favorites of the year so far and that book is muse of nightmares by laney taylor this is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer, which I read in February. Um, and again, both books were five stars. Can't really say very much about this one, only that it continues Laszlo's story. And this one actually has a lot more history. Some of the things that you read about in the first book, this book actually deals with the history of that and really brings it into focus and gives you a lot of backstory and tells you how things happened, why things happened. Um, but there's also some more sources of conflict in here, uh, which are scarier than the ones that were in the first book. Um, and I absolutely, I, I adore Lady Taylor's writing. I've fallen in love with her style of writing. Um, I fell in love with these two books. Um, I don't think it's going to be long before I've actually got copies of these books on my shelf. Um, I'm actually looking to see whether I can get the original UK covers the blue one for Strange the Dreamer and this one for Muse of Nightmares um from anywhere um because I really love them and I don't like the the current paperback covers I really I think these covers were stunning the writing is stunning um I think I've said in a previous video that I had started her other series uh last year I think I listened to it on audiobook and I'm really looking forward. I really want to continue on with that series. I think I might go back and reread that one because I don't think I got the full force of her writing style through the audiobook. So I think I might actually go back and pick those up as actual books um, or ebooks more than likely. Um, but yes, I just absolutely fell in love with this book and I highly recommend this series. Um, there, there are some adult themes in here, so it is definitely young adults so I would say 16 plus um, I just I absolutely fell in love with them 
Um, both books are in my top books of the year so far. So book 12 of the year was the final book that I needed to read for my um, owls, uh, which means that I've actually completed the owls and I completed the owls in about 23 days, I think, of April. Obviously, I have read other books in between as well. I had 11 books in total on my TBR and this was book, 11, although it's book 12 that I finished, it was book 11 of my set TB, original set TBR for the month. Um, so I'm really pleased that I managed to get through them all. Um, and I'm really glad uh, because it's allowed me to move on and do another three readathon, which is running at the moment um, in April. So book 12 was Southern Player by Jessica Peterson. This was book 12 um, of the year and it's book two of her Charleston Heat series. Uh, I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. I enjoyed it more than I actually enjoyed the first book and I'm glad I continued on because the evolution of her writing, um, I can see that in this book. I don't know um, how many series she's written either before or since this, uh, but I could see an evolution in her writing from the first book to this one. Certainly the plot points that create conflict between the two main characters has improved in this second book. And this book is about um, the sister of the main character from the first book and his best friend so it's a best friend sister's uh, romance novel. Luke is an ex-baseball player he's um, had an injury which means he can no longer play so he's returned to Charleston and he's started up a farm and he supplies uh, his best friend with groceries from that farm and through that he's met her, his younger sister Gracie. Um, Gracie is, has been trying to find love for some years and she's gotten a bit stuck in a rut and she's realised that actually what she's been trying to do is please other people instead of pleasing herself and she's lost parts of herself along the way. So what she proposes is that she and Luke start a partnership so that she can find herself again and rediscover uh, things about herself um, and also experiment um, along the way as well. Luke though at the same time has realised that he's actually in love with Gracie and he wants to try for a relationship with her. Now it's all really sweet because actually both Gracie and Luke approach Gracie's brother before they do anything, before they make the proposal. Uh, so it's quite funny to see uh, her brother um, have his sister who comes say hey I want to start a hookup relationship with your best friend and his best friend comes to him and say hey I want to court your sister. Uh, so that was quite funny and quite amusing. Um, again, it was a book I could pick up and put down. It wasn't one that I had to get into straight away and finish. But I did enjoy it and I likely will go on to the third book in the series. Um, I'd like say the plot point that caused any friction between them was actually built up to in this book. So you could see it coming um, and you could see there was a reason behind it. Um, so there wasn't any... It didn't come out of the blue and it wasn't misplaced. So, so yeah, so I did enjoy it. Um, and if you just want something with um, a bit of lighthearted fun, because they are they are quite amusing together, um, and you want a romance with a happy ending, then yes, I'd give it a go because this series isn't actually too bad. So book 13 of the month is another carryover from a previous month. And that book is The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is book two of The Wheel of Time. And I think I actually started this back in January. Uh, but it's quite a thick book. Um, it's over definitely over 500 pages. I think it's just over 600 pages. I gave it three stars. I am enjoying these books. But I'm struggling to remember why I loved them so much the first time around that I read them. Bearing in mind I read them almost 20 years ago now I think about 18 years ago I read these it was around about the time the sixth book in the series came out uh, and I flew through the first six and then I was waiting for book seven eight and nine got halfway through book nine put the series down and never picked it up again um, 
but I bought these end of last year, beginning of this year, uh, with a gift card that I'd been given. Mm -hmm. I bought the first five, and then from there, um, at the start, at the mid March, I bought the rest of the series um, because I want I want to finish it. I really want to know what happens. I kind of remember vague things. Anyway, the the story is about a group of uh, five young people whose village in the beginning of the first book is attacked by creatures and these five people are at risk and they're whisked away by a woman who is an Aes Sedai and she can perform magic um, or the magic that's in this world. Uh, it's called the power. Uh, women have Psy Din, I think, and the men have Psy Dar. Um, only the male power is corrupted. Um, there is a prophecy uh, that's running throughout these books that um, one young person is going to become um, someone reborn because the dark one is escaping his prison. Uh, this book is about the hunt for the Horn of Valair uh, because when the Horn of Valair is sounded, the heroes of a the Age of Legends will come back and will fight for the person who sounded the horn or for the dragon reborn um and it's all about at the beginning of this book we have the horn at the beginning of this book but then it's stolen and then this book then is about the journey uh that all five of these young people and two more that have um, come into the story from other parts of the world uh, go through to get the horn back um so it covers a span of a few months of time um there's peril there's danger there's mystery uh there's people coming into it that you think maybe aren't there for the best reasons um there's revelations about some people who maybe aren't quite so uh well behaved and i enjoyed it i am um, i did want to go on to the dragon reborn straight away which is book three in the series but i've managed to put that off um I think if I read them in quick succession, I'm probably going to burn out. And apparently the middle of the books, especially book nine, which is the one I originally stopped on, they're a bit slow going, they're a bit of a hard slog. So I'm trying to pace myself with these and make sure I have lots in between so that I don't actually um, run out of steam with reading them. But yes, it's it's they're not a bad fantasy read. Um, certainly, it's just there's so much detail in there that I think at the moment, with everything that's been going on, um, I've had to force myself to get into the story a little bit. But I'm really pleased that I finished it because um, that's another book off of my ongoing TBR um, that I'm trying to, to cut down on this year. And then book 14, which is the last book that I have actually finished at the point that I'm filming this. Again, it's carryover from March and that's Why Mummy Drinks by Jill Sims. I started this in mid-March. This is a comedy book. It's about uh, the drudgery of life as a middle-class mummy. Um, it's a diarised style. Um, I'm not sure if I can... So, as you can see, it's written in diary format. Um, and it's just anecdotes of her day. Uh, Jill Sims is actually the author of Facebook page Peter and Jane, which... I've always found hugely funny so that was what drove me to pick up this book when I saw she was writing a book I thought oh, I'd really like to give that a go I didn't find this as humorous as the Facebook page unfortunately uh, there was something lost I think in the writing process um, the Facebook page comes across as a genuine like this is my day um, whereas this doesn't so much there's something lost in the writing but it wasn't bad um, it just wasn't great. Um, I might read Why Mummy Swears. I might not. Um, I'm certainly in no hurry to pick up the next book. Um, but I'm glad I finished it. I actually borrowed it from a friend that I work with. Um, I can't get it back to her at the moment because we're on furlough. Um, but I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I borrowed it. Um, just not sure that I'll carry on. There's a lot more involved in this um, because it widens the scope of her family. So it's not just her and her immediate family. There's all the other mums in the playground. There's her friends. There's brothers and sisters. And um, 
So it goes into a lot more depth. And I think that's probably what it's lost in the storytelling, where it's lost some of the humour in the storytelling, because it's, it's just tried to make it too big um, too quickly. And it's it's introducing you to people that you don't know uh, if you're familiar with the Facebook page. Um, but yes, I was nice to finish it. It was good to get it off the um, previous TBRs um, and... I can now actually move on and hopefully get a couple more finished. Recommend it if you like daily life stories, but don't expect too much from it. So book 15 that I am going to finish a bit later on today is the first book that was set for my April readathon, end of April readathon, the Romanceopoly readathon. And this book is Heart of Eden by Caroline Fife. Uh, this is a historical romance novel uh, set in the Midwest of America, um, Colorado it's actually set in, and it's set in a small town called Eden. Five sisters have been called back to this town from Philadelphia because their father has passed away and they have to be present when his will is read. They were estranged from their father, they hadn't seen him since they were very small children, in fact the youngest uh, was only a couple of months old when they left the father, when the mother took them away. Uh, there is some conflict that's happened because they find out some things about their father that they didn't know and also the people that had been caring for them, they find out some things that they didn't know and it goes from there basically. It's supposed to be a romance novel. Um, I'm a bit frustrated because it took about 80% to get to the point where the romance starts to kick in. Um, so we've got a very rushed we've seen the couple spending time together but we've not really seen anything that would um make them fall in love with each other really so it's not that um yes i'm not really sure about it i uh, i very definitely don't think i'll move on to the next book in the series i definitely don't think i'll finish the series to be honest it feels more like when you're um the way it reads is when you're watching a tv new tv series it's, it's the first series first season and you need to be introduced to all the characters that's how this book feels it just feels like it, it's just bringing all these characters in um who i think are going to have romances with the sisters further down the line in in later books but she's the author has decided to bring them all into this first book so she spends the first 80 percent introducing you to everybody and then she gets into the romance and there's no time for the romance left. Um, so I'm I'm enjoying uh, uh, I say I'm enjoying it. It's a two and a half stars, possibly three. I'll probably round it up to three. Um, definitely not going to continue on with the series. Um, I do and I don't like the main couple. Um there's aspects of their, I suppose that's the way you never like everybody completely, do you? But there's lots of aspects about it that I really don't, I'm really not enjoying. Um, the writing's a little bit stilted because she's just trying to chuck everything in there in one go. Um, but it doesn't make me interested in carrying on. So that's all the books that I've read in April. Um, I hope you had a good reading month in April. Um, regardless of whether you did or didn't, let me know down in the comments um, and I'll chat with you all there. Um, and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.